Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We're excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive into it. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. This is Shayla with USMLE Sarti, and we are so excited to talk to you today about AI. When is it appropriate to use? When is too much? When is too little? And what are some of the tips to look for when you're using AI um, on your application? Uh, with me today, I have Pawan Kira. Pawan, how are you doing? Good, Shayla. And again, very timely topic because we are all finalizing our personal statements, it asks CV, and everyday students are either using AI or asking these questions. Yeah, so we're going to go over today some of the questions that student uh, students ask us and hopefully clear some of the air on how to use it. Okay, so let's get started. So my first question, we'll start off with, what are some of the cons of using AI during your application process? So as uh, all of us who have used now AI uh, can attest, you know, the disadvantages of AI is obviously it is not personal enough. It does not reflect your personality, uh, lacks emotion, uh, that passion that you need to demonstrate in your personal statement, something that comes from your unique experiences that is missing. Sometimes it can find, uh, sound too formal, uh, you know, not the day-to-day -day language we use. Uh, because the, the biggest thing when it comes to disadvantage of AI, as you can see, is once you write the PS and the CV, you have to go and interview, even if it's a remote interview. So how you converse with the pro uh, interviewer, program director, and when they're reading your statement, that has to align. You know, if the statement is too flowery, too Shakespearean, whereas when you are conversing, uh, you are hesitant, maybe you are making a lot of grammatical errors, and maybe it's very clear that you didn't write that, that's the biggest threat, I think, of using AI for these personal statements. So they'll definitely find out one way or another. <laughs> uh, so that leads us to what what percentage of AI detection um, is kind of a red flag on the PS and CV? Um, you know, I think anything more than 15 to 20 percent uh, is problematic. It is going to be problematic. Now, of course, AI is a new tool or new technology and programs are still getting used to it. Uh, so it's hard to say uh, many programs, many universities have already started using it, but probably the community hospitals may not be using it, but uh, hard to say, I would say anything more than 15 to 20% uh, AI content uh, is problematic. And do you think it's, I mean, I know you said it's hard to say, but do you think programs will be using those tools that detect or? I, I think you will see an increasing trend every season. So first will be the university programs because, you know, a university has other courses, programs. Uh, for example, Turnitin is a, a technology uh, used when I was a grad student, you know, Carnegie Mellon was using it. So universities will be the first off the block and then gradually coming down to community programs. But these tools uh, as as to check AI are not expensive. So programs can very well use it. Okay, so that's some of the cons. Um, let's talk about maybe the pros of using AI. When is it okay to use AI? Yes. So obviously there are advantages and that's why people use AI. It's, it's, it's much quicker to refine your thoughts and, you know, can quickly spit out the answers. Obviously, uh, almost zero or very few grammatical errors, right? Uh, but again, it depends on whether you're, you know, there is a difference between American English and British English and all that, but uh, grammatical errors will be very, very less. And of course, it can remove redundancy from your sentences. Uh, it can find more creative words, more action verbs to use. So we teach a lot of it in our classes, use action verbs, you know, how to use the AI tool. So we have classes which actually teach you how to use AI for program outreach, for personal statements. So there are obvious advantages to using AI tools. 
Great. So yeah, when would you say that it is appropriate? Can they still use it for grammar and editing checks after they've written? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the way to think of these productivity tools, AI tools, is you know, you always should have a draft. You should have your draft ready and then probably either use it to, like you said, you know, improve your grammar, sentence structure, some of those things, removing those typos, or even brainstorming. You know, you may have a case study in mind, a case in mind, uh, experience that you've had. Uh, you know, today we were having class uh, and students were discussing their experiences, how they helped a family, how they helped a difficult patient. So if you have had such experiences which are unique to you, then to refine those experiences, I think AI is a very good tool. Great. And what do you say about the weight that maybe like a, an AI generated perfectly flowery um, personal statement versus a personalized, like simple grammatic grammar free personal statement? What would you think have more weight? So I think given that we have worked with thousands of IMGs over the years, uh, most of us uh, don't have English as the first language. Uh, most of us are not professional writers, right? So I would say a simple personal statement that does not have grammatical errors, et cetera, is much better than an AI-generated flowery personal statement. Now, if you have been a professional writer, that's how you talk, that's how you write, probably okay. Then it's okay. Because in the end, you are conversing with the program director and they will find out very easily whether the statement written can be attributed to you or not. But if you're not one of those personalities, I think there are more disadvantages of using an AI generated personal statement, for example, uh, than a simple personal statement that uh, you, know, you can use. Great, and then you've hinted a little bit about how Sarthi can help. We have some classes and some things like that. Um, we also have physicians and journalists that edit the PS and the CV. Do we use AI in any of our editing? Uh, no. So, uh, and, and you know, students are free to go to our website. So we have a panel of journalists. They are all working in reputed newspapers in the U.S. So our journalist team is all U.S. And they do it for a living, uh, reporting and editing and, and you know, obviously uh, with the English as, as their mother tongue. So we, they don't use AI tools. Uh, our physicians are all residents, attendings, fellows in the in the U.S. system. They don't use AI tool. In fact, we tell our students that we will not run your statement through any AI tool. So it's your responsibility. So we don't use it, and uh, you know I don't expect uh, any editor, etc., to use AI tools. Now, of course, then the some of the students always ask us which AI tools to use, you know, which one is better than the others. Uh, there are many tools uh, and it keeps evolving, you know, as algorithms become better. Uh, Chat GPT, I think all of us have heard of it. Uh, that's a good one. Gemini from Google is a good one. Uh, Meta AI, this is the Facebook uh, tool. They're all good tool. They, they will do the work uh, at this level. So any, any of these can be used. The other thing which uh, I forgot to mention is you can actually train the AI tools uh, to write like you. So if you you know upload uh, your original writing or whatever it is, uh, and if they have sufficient sample, uh, then the AI tool can actually help you write like you rather than a Shakespeare. Great, so that's another example of how AI can help um, okay, so yeah, in summary, I would say that using AI can be a helpful tool. There's definitely ones out there that are better than others, but we don't want to have the AI writing the whole thing. Um, so definitely start with your draft, um, get some grammar and editing help, and then Sarthi does personal one-on-one -on -one, um, appointments with the physician, the journalist edits one-on-one -on, -one on your document. So it's going to be a personalized and customized editing too. So anything else you wanted to add there? No, absolutely. Yes. Uh, let's go with that. And hopefully this was helpful. And like you said, uh, we still have some openings for uh, personal statement review uh, and uh, CV review for those of you who may be interested. 
uh, you know, dedicated time with the physician team and one-on-one -on -one, uh, review by the journalist, um, you know, of your personal statement, etc. So we still have openings on that if anyone is interested. Great. Thanks, Kwan. All right. Thank you. And good luck, everyone, for the upcoming season. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.